All your ideas may be solid or even good, but you have to actually execute on them for them to matter. What's up, everyone? John Royster here with Abby Lynchango. Hi. And we are on episode six of our fabulous podcast. And it's been a while since we posted one. It's only been a week. Uh, today's Thursday. It's okay. It's like a week and a half. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Four days behind on our podcast. All right. Well, we went on vacation, so we'll we'll tell the viewer, tell the listeners about our past vacation, where we went, and what we did. Well, we went to New York, my homeland, for the past twenty three years until we moved to Ohio, and we just went to Long Island. That's where I was born and raised. And we just spent time with family, a lot of time with family, kind of. And we saw a concert, which we'll get into later. Oh, tell them now. Tell now? Them, tell them right the hell now what happened at the all concert. All right, all right. Well, so we'll, for, No, you go ahead. You go. So this... Because you're salty as fuck. <laughs> I am salty. So we get to Long Island, and oh, before that, uh, well, Abby was looking at things to do in Long Island before we even got there, like weeks out. So she's seen this concert that was going on. Well, all of like the like Facebook channels and well, all that advertising, Google searches and stuff said Kit Moore was going to be at this concert. Well, she got tickets uh, from what was the website Ticketmaster. Yep. She got tickets from Ticketmaster.com, and Ticketmaster never said who was going to be at this concert. It just said the fest, and we just kind of. Figured that everybody advertising the fest saying Kit Moore's going to be there. Well, we figured he was going to be there. So, anyway, she got the tickets. We get to uh, freaking the concert. the concert place. And, you know, we're grabbing some funnel cakes. We're grabbing some brewskis. And I got a big old uh, cigar. And we put our chairs up. And we start listening to all the bands playing. Well, I was kind of like pacing myself with... Like, the excitement and everything. Uh, waiting for Kip Moore to come on before, so I can just, like, you know, have a good time. Well, it's, like, pitch black outside. People are leaving. And we're, like, where the heck is Kip Moore at? So we start asking around. We're like, hey, is Kip Moore going to be uh, performing tonight? And they're like, no, Kip Moore, you know, Kip Moore is, like, a few years ago. He's not going to be here this year. And we pulled our phones out, and we double-checked all the advertisements, and when we double-checked, you know, how it was marketed, and it said it said he was going to be there this year, and it had the date on it and everything, so I don't know who screwed us. I don't know if it was Ticketmaster for not putting down the people that was going to be there, or if it was all these, you know, radio stations advertising it wrong, or I don't know. But needless to say, we sat there for hours... Slamming beers and hoagies, and uh, never really got to experience like like that night. It was kind of like we were waiting for that moment that never happened. It yeah, was- like there was other people opening for Dustin Lynch. Dustin Lynch was, I guess, a headliner, and I wasn't even paying attention to the people there because I thought Chase Rice was going to show up, and then Kip Moore was going to show up, and. But, like, now I wish I was just listening to the music because I would have gotten my money's worth. And I was just, I think, zoning out. And I was like, when are these people going to show up? Yeah, I was just kind of sitting there hanging out, like, viewing the crowd and talking to Abby, waiting for them to come on stage. And they never did. So, like, if I, it would have been different if I knew they weren't going to be there. If I knew they weren't going to be there, then I guess I could have experienced what I was experiencing a little bit better and actually enjoyed it. Uh, but instead, I was just kind of like buying time until they went on stage yeah that was kind of a letdown so then we just hung out we went and seen some fishies at the aquarium fishies some fishies and we also saw what was it a sea lion yeah we seen a sea lion and he did his little penguins. show and penguins and otters and some Japanese snow monkeys. <laughs> those are pretty cool. Yeah, I like those. And then we just hung out for the rest of the time. Went swimming, went to the beach. We worked out. Worked out. Worked out at 
two different gyms on Long Island at different ends of Long Island. One was on the North Shore and one was on the South Shore. The one on the South Shore didn't have any AC and was really brutally hot. It was not enjoyable to work out in. So, well, we wanted to go work out at the gym on the North Shore called Outlift Athletics. And they had AC and it was a really, really nice gym. I think it was really nice. Yeah, if you're if you're like going to travel to Long Island or you're already there and you have an experienced Outlift Athletics, definitely go check it out. All the people there are really nice. Their equipment's nice, new. It's not dirty. Bars aren't all busted up and mismatched plates everywhere and everything. So if you have the opportunity, definitely go check out uh, Outlift Athletics. And if someone from Outlift Athletics is listening to this, go suggest that they have a monolift. It would make their <laughs> gym a little bit better. Yeah. But that's the only thing that they're missing. Probably. Eh. Like, maybe out of the, like, five things that they're missing. But a monolith Five? Is, what are they missing? Like a cambered bar. Some... I don't know if they have chains. They were missing... Yeah, they didn't have chains there. They didn't have, like, a nice cambered bar. And they didn't have... Uh, a monolift. I don't even remember seeing a box. Yeah, I don't think they... No, they have those, like, plyo boxes. But, like, not an actual box that you could sit on. If they would have had a monolift and a camera bar, then I could have, I could have rigged up everything else. But luckily, we didn't even need the monolift while we were there. Yeah, uh, it was kind of like a deload. Kind yeah, of. It was, I mean, it was kind of a deload because once we got back, so this week, this this is my like twelve weeks out for my competition. So uh, tomorrow, which is going to be Friday the thirteenth. Ooh. Ooh. Bad luck. Yeah, I want to be doing uh, heavy squats with briefs and wraps. And then Sunday I'll be doing heavy bench press raw for a heavy single. And then the week after that, oh, shoot, next week. Next yeah. next week I'll be getting into my gear for my shirt and be, be doing a three board. Uh, but yep, competition prep is going good. My weight's up to 200 now, so... I'm just going to try to maintain weight and lean out a little bit. Try to look a little bit more ripped. Make more room for muscle. Um, so, yeah. So, let's get into some of the events. Oh. So, while we were on vacation, if anybody knows who Eva Dunbar is, she freaking... What weight class is she in? 148? I don't know. 160 something? I, I think she's in a 160 sure. something weight class. I can't remember her weight class, but she's a bodybuilder slash powerlifter, and she's been a raw powerlifter for a while, but she freaking threw on a bench press shirt and took 530 to a three board, which is pretty freaking incredible seeing that like the week before that, I took 535 to a three board, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, and then she touched 530. In a single ply, I think. No way. It wasn't 530. Maybe it's still one board. Yeah, I don't know. I I think it's still one board, maybe. I don't know, but she... Just her being able to do that, uh, 530 and a two or three board, that's that's pretty remarkable. That's, That's a pretty great feat of strength right there. So, you know, anytime you ever get cocky or whatever, you think your shit don't stink and you think that, like, you're Billy Badass, just... There's people out there, men and women, who are probably outlifting you. So keep that in the back of your head next time you go to train, next time you go to the gym. Uh, and not just because she's a female, but just everybody out there. There's there's lots of people out there that are bigger, faster, stronger than you are. And every time you're not doing what you need to be doing inside or outside of the gym, there's people who out there are, and they're going to kick your ass at whatever it is you're doing. So... Keep that in mind. Make sure you push hard. Make sure you do everything, whether it's sleeping, eating, stretching, whatever, meditation. Go freaking do it and make sure that you're not leaving yourself. There's there's no excuses, um, you know, being thrown around as to why you're not where you're at, why you're not where you're wanting to be. That's a tongue twister. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so... So this weekend, Diamond Strength Systems is teaming up with Iron City Barbell in mm-hmm. Jackson, Ohio. Yep. And we're going to be kind of hosting a 
Deadlifts and Donuts competition up there. And which... Here, hold that. Okay. Which the the people there that's actually compete so the competitors for this event I'm not totally sure that like they're aware of how this is going to play out yeah cuz oops all we all I really wrote on the event is that we're going pound for pound but they don't really know the whole logistics of it they don't it. know what that means yeah but ideally what we're going to do um we're going to have just one bar um, the women and the men go together, but the increments that we go are different for females and males. So for females, we're going to start with 95 pounds of the bar and add 20 pounds every time, right? I think, but if we do that, then how are, then you're going to take that weight off and put on the weight for the men? They only add another 10 because we're adding 30 for them. So you'll just add... Uh, 10 pound plate every round. Yeah. And then I don't, for the men, I'll, you'll just add. Yeah, I don't know a, how a five. we're going to do that, but I'll, fi- I'll figure it out. Yeah, so basically, we're just going to. The men will have larger weight jumps than the women. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be. It's going to be kind of like a. What's the word I'm looking for? Not marathon, but. Like a Car, it's going to be kind of like a cardio slash strength test because uh, if we're only jumping like 30 pounds for the men and so we start off at 135 and we're only going to be jumping 30 pounds per lift until you've, we've reached the max weight and nobody can pull any more than that, you're going to be talking at like 12 to 15 sets. Until you get to like 400 until you, 500 pounds. Yeah, until you get up near your max. So... For those people who can't last very long, but can pull, you know, five, six hundred pounds on their fifth or sixth pull, you know, it's going to kind of even the playing field a little bit for the people who, you know, they may not be able to lift as much, lift as much, but they can last longer. So there might be a section where it crosses over where some of these people, you know, they they can definitely pull four hundred five, but you get to three seventy five or three sixty five, and they're already gassed and start out. And, and start dying out because your your grip's shot and you know you're tired and all that good stuff. So yeah, but we're doing it because we're not doing a Wilk score. We're not doing it by weight class. We just want to have fun with it and like make it fair for everyone else. Yeah, it's just a fun event. We're gonna have donuts. There's gonna be like two trophies, like little bragging rights trophies. I'm pretty sure we'll have coffee too. I'm definitely getting some coffee, some good, some of that good old gas station coffee. <laughs> no, I think I think Iron City Barbell has coffee that we can use. They said we just have to get creamer, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, so it's just gonna be a little fun event. We're just trying to get people. It was kind of spur of the moment. I think we only gave him a, gave two everybody weeks. a two weeks notice. Yeah. So it's just gonna be a spur of the moment. We're gonna try to do it seasonally. So we're gonna have one again in the fall, then the winter, and the spring. And whoever wins this time um, is going to have to bring that back their trophies in the fall and try to um, secure their trophy. And if they don't win, then they're going to have to pass it down to the new winners. And that's going to happen every single time. So whoever wins this time is going to have to really try to outlift everyone else again to keep their trophy. And we'll see how many times it gets passed around. And if it, gets, if it doesn't get passed around, then people know what to look forward to now the next time. Word. Right. Yeah, so it'll be a fun event. We're just trying to get people in the gym. We're trying to get people involved. We're just trying to get people having fun. And we're trying to get people to work out their legs and not just upper body all the time. Because every gym has that group of guys who don't train legs. So yeah. And who doesn't like donuts? Donuts are great. Who's, I love donuts. Who doesn't like deadlifts? Boston cream donuts are my favorite donuts. Fuck the jelly. Fuck the jelly. <laughs> I don't like jelly donuts. They're not fun at all. They're no. gross. No offense to anyone that likes the jelly donuts. Yeah, I'm not a fan of jelly. I'm not even a fan of the cream filled. Really? That's yeah, my I favorite. Like nah. I feel like some donuts are a little too like dry if they don't have the cream. Like the only donut that I know that isn't dry are the Krispy Kreme donuts. And now I really want one. Yeah, I'm kind of craving some donuts now. We were talking about it. Yeah. I already had coffee earlier. I had coffee that I always... So... My my weekly routine is fairly the same every week, but on Wednesdays, 
Uh, we get up in the morning at 4 o'clock, leave the house by 4.30, at the gym by 5, done with the workout by 6.45, back home by 7.15, and then we start getting ready for the day and get ready for work. Well, uh, after work, I'm pretty much dead. Like, I'm tired. It's all get out. So I come home, and I take a nap for about two hours. Every single time I wake up, I don't know what day it is. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty tanked. So then Thursday comes around, and it kind of carries over into Thursday. I'm kind of tired still, so what I do is is when I go to... Now, I'll, I'll sleep in maybe an extra 15 minutes on Thursdays, just because I'm still tired from the night before. And then I'll come home, like today, and I'll usually take me a hot bath, and I'll just kind of try to relax and just try to brain dump everything, because... With us trying to build the business up and trying to build Diamond Strength Systems up and the brand and selling the t-shirts and the programs and the podcast and the Twitter and the Facebook and the Instagram and the YouTube and all that good stuff. <laughs> you sound like that. It gets tiring and it's not an easy process trying to do all this uh, on your own and that's why that's where a lot of people fail and die off is they don't have that entrepreneurship mentality and they don't have that drive and that eagerness to be great. They just... You know, there are a bunch of starters and there are not enough finishers. They get all these ideas and they start doing a bunch of stuff because it sounds fun and it's exciting to them, but they don't stick with it. So, you know, it's, it's very, very tiring. And, if, you know, if, if you're out there and you're trying to, you know, start up your business or you're trying to get into personal training yourself, you know, feel free to contact me and I, I'll definitely pass down some, some stuff that I've learned and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, so... Thursdays, I'll, I'll take a nice hot bath. It's usually with some Epsom salt, uh, but I ran out today, so I just took a hot bath. And uh, after that, I got out, I made some dinner, and I read my Gary, Va- Va- Gary <laughs> Vaynerchuk book, Crushing It. It's a yellow, it's a yellow book, um, but I've been reading it, and... I don't know. I might do a review of the book. I'm almost done with it. I've probably only got like 20 pages left. But I'm almost done with the book. And then I want to start on my next book by Pat Rigsby. Um, so I'll get into the books later. I might do a... I don't know. We were on vacation. And I try to use that time to... I, I wouldn't even say put business on pause. But I would use that time to just try to gather my thoughts. And maybe come up with cool ideas. Because when you're sitting behind... The, uh, you know, when you're sitting behind your computer screen or something all day, like you're not, you're not going to come out with, you're not going to think of a bunch of cool new, like ideas. You got to get away from that. You got to get out. You got to go experience life so you all, uh, you know, can open up your mind and go experience some stuff, uh, that's new and that might bring some ideas upon you. So, you know, we, uh, we learned a lot of stuff. And I might do a series of podcasts where I just kind of uh, go over this next book I'm about to read by Pat Rigsby and probably do like chapter review podcasts on the book, uh, basically going over what that chapter is explaining and describing and how I implemented it because this book is for uh, fitness uh, entrepreneurs to help build up their brand and their their business. So me being an online personal trainer and in person personal trainer and strength coach and powerlifter, um, this book definitely applies to me. And I know and I know Pat Rigsby, so uh, it's going to kind of help. So you know I can always reference him if I'm not fully understanding what's in the book or whatever. So, but I might do that as a podcast, just just me on my own. Uh, reviewing the chapters and how I'm able to implement them or how I'm able to incorporate that into my life and everything that I got going on. Um, Abby? Yes? What have we been up to other than that? Um, hold on. I gotta get Callie off my lap. She's being a little... So, Ca- so Callie is our blue nosed pit bull puppy, and she's our baby. Like she, we had her. I think she was about eight weeks when we got her, which is 
entirely too young, I think. But that's just what happened. Um, we I want to say we rescued her, nah. but uh, I don't know. I really wasn't sure what was going to happen to her, but we got her. She's a fantastic dog. She's absolutely amazing. Beautiful, smart, funny, and she will lick you to death. But we, we all, we've always held her as a puppy, and now she's about 45, 50 pounds and still wants to be held all the time. And Well, that, we can't do that all the time. Yeah. So And now she's just sitting on my lap like a lap dog, but she's too big for my lap, and it's kind of hard for her to hold on. And I just want to love on her because she always wants to get on our laps, and I feel bad. Because we can't do it so often. But every little chance she can get to get on your lap, she will. And she just wants love and she just wants attention. She just wants to be loved on and rubbed. Sounds like you, babe. <laughs> I'm a dog, okay? I am very needy. Oh, so what? I have big news for you. Big news? I have big news for you. Okay, Kelly, go down. Do you want to know what these big news are? Yes, please. Get down, baby. Pandas are no longer an endangered species. I knew this already. Bug, I'm like... How did you know this already? It just came out today. No, it hasn't. Show me it. Because they've been non-endangered for like the past couple months now. And I even told you about it. Well, i just seen it all over the social media today. Yeah. Well, I've seen it before. Anyways. Um, what, what have you been up to? Honestly, we haven't really been up to much. Just the whole vacation part and... Trying to get things on track and I'm... I'm really starting to hone in on my skills as a, as a trainer as an online coach we're trying to get a little bit more fancier with our uh, marketing with our videos. videos and pictures that we put out we're trying to get involved with the community we're trying to put out content 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 and we're trying i am trying to do this in a way where i can get the freak out of the army and open up my own gym that's my that's my one and ultimate goal in life is to open up a profiting successful gym where i'm able to train at with my peoples and we go on to do big and great things um so yeah so that's kind of what we're trying to do with or that's what i'm trying to do with diamond strength systems is, is build it up to where I have money coming in that can replace the money that I'm getting now from the Army, which I make good money from the Army. Uh, I get paid pretty good. But I would definitely be willing to take a substantial pay cut in order to live the life I want and to be happy and do me. Because that's the, one of my biggest... I know this for a fact that if I'm on my deathbed and I haven't ventured into building a gym or anything and I haven't you know I've always waited for that right moment but I never took the the leap of faith that that's going to be my biggest regret and I'm I would never be able to live with myself if I know that I never never tried so so right now we're trying to get I'm trying to get the heck out of the army and we're trying to build up diamond strength systems and we went to oh so coming back from vacation coming back from Long Island uh, our plane landed in Columbus, Ohio, and we were we're two hours south of Columbus, Ohio, and right outside of Columbus, maybe even in Columbus, I don't I don't know exactly, but is the Rogue Fitness Warehouse slash what do you call it? Manufacturers, I yeah. guess. Oh, like it's their warehouse. It's it's the Rogue Fitness CrossFit. Uh, warehouse where they have all their equipment and have all their goodies and uh we went there we stopped walked in it was our first time we went there me and abby and i was kind of like blown away it was the parking lot was empty oh well, it seemed empty like I, there was like a car or two but there was like a pretty hefty amount of people in there i mean i don't say a hefty amount of people but <laughs> It just kind of looks empty. It was kind of sketchy walking in because it just looks so empty. But we walked in there, and the place is absolutely massive. It's huge. We walked in, and immediately there were uh, – it was just a great – it was two giant rooms, uh, just two rooms. There's, there wasn't walls or anything. It was just an open open room, and they had all their T-shirts and products, like their wrist wraps and belts and stuff on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, they had – 
some power racks, and different cars. different colors and different sizes and shapes. And then they had um, the bars, and they had what? Someone asked a question of what, what we should talk about on our podcast. Bro. All right, well, we can save that for the next one. We're trying to podcast now. It's distracting me. Uh, so right next to the uh, power racks, they had the racks for the barbells. They had everything from, like, women's ollie bars to men's ollie bars. They had the West Side barbell, like the West Side 2.0 barbell. They had the Cham bar, and they had a bunch of... Uh, bunch of well, they had a few specialty bars there, but one of the bars that we really like, which I want to try to purchase myself here in the next uh, couple months, is going to be a uh, I think it's just a power bar, but they've customized their power bars or they've customized a lot of their power bars to I, I guess just kind of stand out a little bit. So some of their power bars, some had like black camo. That, well, no, they were black. Some oh. some of them had like a black. What's the piece that you call on the barbell? The, the end that you slide the plates on. The end where you slide the plates on. No, it has a name. I, <laughs> I don't, don't know. know. The name. Yeah, I don't know the name of it. But whatever the piece that you slide the plates on, like they had like chrome pieces, black black uh, black ends with like the orange bar, camo bars. They had a freedom bar, which is super cool, and I definitely like to have. And, uh, but yeah, so we were just kind of going there, spotting out things for our future gym and some future equipment. And that orange and black bar was definitely probably going to be the first bar we buy. Uh, I just didn't like the fact that it didn't have the central knurling. Like, I don't care what kind of bar you're using. If your body is... I mean, I could be wrong, but if your body is touching the center ner- center of the bar, like actually touching it, then you're probably doing some kind of movement to where you want that bar to stick, you know? Yeah. Like a front squat. You know, it helped, you know having a little center neural on the bar is going to help keep the bar in place. If you're doing a regular squat with the bar on your back, you know, it's going to help keep the bar in place. Uh, you know, there's there's not a whole lot that I think... Uh, you know, th- there's not a whole lot. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of bars there. We definitely, definitely spotted some out and priced some out. And then in the ne- the next building, or I guess the next, not the next building, but the next room over, they had this giant, giant, massive setup. Rubber floors everywhere. They had turf going straight down the center of the of the room they had a big wall it had like the rogue barbell painted on it they had racks and racks and racks different shapes different sizes basically kind of advertising all of their products but at the same time uh one of the gentlemen working there told us that some of the sponsored athletes would come in and actually work out in that like showcase style room so it was just really neat to see all that stuff just trying to get pricing and get an idea of what we want our future gym to look like and to get an idea of some of the stuff that we're going to put in there and how much room it takes up and and all that good stuff so oh yeah i don't know but i it was a cool it was a cool little little not little it was kind of big rogue was cool I want to know if um, Elite FTS has a um, a warehouse like that because I would want to see what it looks like because we already seen Westside Barbell, but we didn't see like what kind of equipment they sold. So I think it would be pretty cool if Westside Barbell had something like that too, where you could go in and like test out their equipment that they're selling, or if if Elite FTS had one where we could test out what they're selling as well and. Just try to figure out what kind of equipment that we want because honestly, I don't want a lot of mix matching equipment in our gym. Like I would want to stick with one brand. I don't want to if we can. Yeah, I don't want shit mix, mix matched. I don't want a bunch of machines in the gym because if you need machines to like reach peak physical fitness, then you're doing something wrong. And I'm not talking about tr- like 
treadmills, like machines like treadmills or ellipticals and stuff, I mean, those definitely come in handy when you want to run in place. But, you know, if you need a seated military press machine to, you know, work that part of your body, then you're either, you know, uneducated on, on different styles of lifting and different methods to work that muscle or you're just lazy yeah. and we I, we don't want a bunch of machines filling up this gym we i view this gym as a very minimalistic gym yes very very minimal uh with the nicest shit you can get like i want somebody to walk in there and be like holy cow like they got some nice stuff here and i mean to to balance the price out with the nice stuff is we're just not going to have a whole lot of it. So we're going to have we're going to have uh, some power racks, some cages in there. Uh, I would like to have three power racks in there. Uh, well, not power racks. We'd like to have three rigs, some rogue rogue rigs. So if we hired on a CrossFit coach, they could instruct a class there because this gym is a, this gym is going to be a like a strength facility it's a strength of gym it's not just going to be a powerlifting gym no. this gym is going to be used to to train athletes. athletes and competitive individuals through strength yeah and speed and explosiveness so and then you'll have your every day like joe schmo that comes in and works out but it's not going to be like in any time fitness or la fitness or planet fitness like yeah you're not going to see grandma in there freaking working out you know because we may have, we're probably going to have some rowers, you know, some Concept 2 rowing machines. We're probably going to have a treadmill or two, maybe an elliptical or something. But we're going to have our rogue rigs. We're going to have our turf down the middle. We're going to have two competition-style competition, competition style bench press machines. We're going to have some deadlift platforms, a mono lift, uh, specialty bars, dumbbells, 5 through 150 pounds. We're going to have flat benches, incline benches. We're going to have a uh, hyperextension machine, leg press machine. We're going to have like the essentials, but the good essentials. Because you can do literally anything with dumbbells. Literally anything with yeah. dumbbells. Yeah, I may, maybe have some kettlebells and stuff in there. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll have bands and chains. and leg press machine. We'll have like the chest fly that, like, that you could turn into the reverse fly or whatever. But And we'll have like treadmills there. I don't know if you said that already. Yeah, I said that, and I said that press already. Oh, sorry. I zoned out for a second. Um, but yeah, it'll be a fun gym, and our colors are going to be orange and black, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, it's going to be more black than orange. With, like, a splash of orange. Yeah. Like, I don't want it to be 50-50, you know? I want it to have, like, black walls, black floor, maybe have the floor have some, like, speckled speckled orange orange in there the bars are going to be mostly black with some orange our equipment's probably going to be mostly black with some orange it'll be cool to get like a black and orange turf like mostly black but like orange lines on them imagine or just orange it'd be cool just to get orange turf in general orange turf with white lines on them yeah that'd be pretty dope yeah but we're just wanting to we're wanting to i'm hoping to do this next year i'm hoping i can start this gym up next year um, you know, I love the army. Done se- almost seven and a half years in the army, but my entrepreneurial side of me it just can't. It can't do it no more. I want to continue to do it as long as I have to because I'm a soldier and that's what I do. But I have to get out of the army and I have to build this gym because this this is my calling. This is what I'm destined to do. And I finally found out what it is, you know, what my purpose here on earth is, and that's to train and to train individuals and, uh, you but know, influence I've also, people. But I've also found my calling, and we also have to make that happen. What's that? Um, just, just, I can't say it. Why not? Because I'm not allowed. Yeah, so <laughs> what our plan is, is... There's a business out there. We can't say what it is right now. But, so, one, I I basically have a few different options. Option one is to renew my renew my contract, you know, basically for the income, for the money. Renew my contract with the Army and continue to work. My other option is 
is to try to get a loan and find a place to put a gym uh, by the end of this year and open it and run it. So by the time my contract's up, I can just make a smooth transition to working there full time. And then the third option is is uh, Abby buying this business and me working for the business full time, or uh, if for some you know some reason she can't you know get the business by herself or in her name, I'll try to do it myself. You know, heck, I may not even be able to 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 get the loan for it, but I you know I think we'll be. I think you'll be able to get a loan for this business easier than you can get a loan for building a new gym, only because. This, this business is a profiting business for the, yeah. over 10 years, and it already has its clientele. It already has everything in place. Like, she's just going to be taking over yeah. the business. But everything else is going to be set to go. running and operating the same. Yeah. Like, we'll be eliminating a lot of steps that it takes to open up a new business where you have, like, your inspectors coming in and all that other fun stuff that you have to deal with, like... It, like I literally just have to walk in and it's already making money. Yeah, you know? so she might have a pretty good chance at that. So option three would be her get that business, and then me get out of the army next year and go basically work for that business and try to maximize the profit that it can make. And if she can't do it, then I'll try to do it myself. Or we go in as business partners and we go fifty fifty. Yeah, or which we is fine. You know, or, or we try to go in and just kind of split the split the business, her and I. So there's there's things that we're going to do. I mean, I'm kind of nervous to actually do it because it involves money, and that shit just don't grow on trees. So you yeah. know, it's going to be it's going to be kind of scary. You know, I mean, I've I, I've been without, and I've had a lot at different points in my life, and right now I'm definitely. Uh, financially on top and stable um, but emotionally and like psychologically you know I'm just not where I want to be at I, you know I want to be out of the army I want to be running a gym I want to be training athletes and I want to be doing you know everything I can in the fitness industry uh, to help others that's out there so it's going to be kind of scary though yeah yep but I'm willing. The, the hardest part is. I'm going to go check on Kelly. She's okay. She's just sitting by the door whining. Oh, she wants okay. in. Yeah, we had to kick the dog out because she was just Trying interrupting. Um, the hardest part is, is me, myself, I will go to great lengths to get what I want. And I will, I will really live a minimalistic life and really do without to get to where I want to be and, and all that stuff. But, you know, when you got somebody else in your life and you have, you know, animals and dogs and you have, you know, you have things that you got to take care of, you can't always, you know, go full in and wing it and, you know, do, do it that way. So, I don't know. We're going to see what we can do. We're going to see what we can do and hopefully everything works out in our favor. We have three options that we can go to. and Four and a half. We four. Get yeah, four options. And we're just going to see which one's going to happen at the right moment. And we're just going to try to set set us, <laughs> set ourselves up for success instead of failure. And we're just going to do things right and not rush into anything and really think things over and plan everything and do what we can. Yeah, we're going to, I mean, basically, we're just going to be documenting most of this stuff along the way because, you know, I listen to, I listen to a lot of influencers and Gary Vaynerchuk and Pat Rigsby and all these guys on social media and I listen to how they do things and, you know, you always hear, or I've always hear or heard that there's two, there's two individuals. You have the creators and then you have the documenters. And me, I'm a creative person. But as far as, like, technology, I mean, I can only do so much with iMovie. I can only do so much with a GoPro. You know, there's only so much I can do with the things I have. So I want to try to maximize that and try to maximize what I can do with what I'm given. But I'm only going to be able to go so far. So I want to maximize that and just 
try to be as creative as I can. But I think the the best best and biggest thing that is going to work for us and me is just documenting things, just documenting on these podcasts of where we're going, what we're doing, events that are coming up, you know, how I'm doing in my training, how Abby's doing in her training because she has a powerlifting <laughs> meet coming up herself. And we're just going to try to document this. I want to say step by step, but, I mean, we want to really – we, we kind of want to be vulnerable here and we want to put ourselves out there and and show you all what we are doing, how we're doing it, talk about, you know, our personal lives, to try to let you all really get to know who we are and what we're doing, what we're about, and not be that Instagram fake account that's, you know... Hiding behind, the, like, the Photoshop picture. And yeah, hiding like behind that. all the glam because, you know, trying to get this stuff started is not... It is not easy. I was gonna say it's not fun, but honestly, like I just I love this shit. I love like coming up with ideas and doing things and following through with projects and accomplishing, you know, the goals I've written down and checking that block off. What you know, telling myself, you know, what I'd done it. I did that. I I made a goal and I done it. So uh, I definitely love the journey. I love the ride, and I'm just gonna try to document as much as I can and maybe you know one two five years from now where we're looking back on these podcasts laughing about how bad the quality is and (laughs) sharing one microphone and, uh, you know, doing this, you know, in in a spare bedroom with this little tiny table that we're both hovered over just so we can record a podcast with. So, I don't know. I don't know how far we're going to come, but... I mean, who knows? Technology is advancing every day. Nobody knows what the internet is going to be like in six months, 12 months. So, you know, the thing with creating things is you kind of create things, uh, you know, that people like and that are interesting. Well, that stuff changes all the time. But one thing that's not going to change is somebody's going to want to look back and be like, you know, how did they do that? How did they do this? How is this happening? You know, what's the process? You know, who can I talk to? And at some point, I want to be that expert person that people come and talk to like hey you know how do, how do I do this how do I do that you know what what did you find helpful or, or you know what did you learn so I want to I want to be that Pat Rigsby and I want to be that Gary Vaynerchuk and I also want to be you know those top level at that that top level power lifter and so you know we're trying to do a lot at the same time and um the, the keys to that or dedication and discipline because motivation is bullshit it don't exist there's no such thing as motivation um you know if you think there is it just lasts for a short amount of time then it's gone so if you haven't been able to take that motivation and transition it to dedication and discipline then you're gonna you're gonna be far far off so uh in the meantime what i've been doing is i've just been trying to get my clientele up online Uh, i'll be taking more and more online clients uh the first of august uh it's and how i'm doing my online clients is it's a 75 dollars a month and you're going to receive that whole month's worth of workouts you're going to tailor to your goals and what you want uh you're going to receive video critiques coaching fitness mentoring, nutritional guidance, you know, the whole shebang. I want to try to give you as excuse me, as much as I can, as much everything I got. Uh, but we all got to start somewhere and after looking at other prices for other people, $75 is extremely cheap for online coaching. So, but I just want to kind of build up a nice clientele and I and I'm beginning, I'm a beginner at the online personal training game, but I'm not a beginner at the fitness game and getting strong. So it's going to be a it's going to be a battle. But if you're interested in online coaching and training and mentoring, uh, you know, hit me up either on Instagram at Diamond underscore Strength underscore Systems, or you can check us out on Facebook Diamond Strength Systems, or hit us up on email at Diamond Strength Systems at gmail dot com. So right now, uh, I did, however, find a freshman in high school online, 
And something that I'm going to do is I'm doing a trial run. And not so much for the program itself, but I'm doing a trial run as to how how does this marketing or how does this strategy to get leads and create that funnel of business that all these personal trainers like to get. You know, It's all about creating your funnel. You have to build up a clientele. So what I did was is I, I found an individual who uh, was on Facebook in one of my powerlifting groups, and uh, you know he was talking about working out and he was talking about programs and stuff. So I reached out to him and I offered him a free six week workout program. It's very I want to say it's very basic, but it did not incorporate speed like the dynamic effort method. It did not incorporate bands or chains. And he's a freshman in high school. <clears throat> he's trying to build up a good base and that's what this method is going to complement is just helping him build up a better base and not just go in and do like biceps and triceps and stuff so I'm running a trial run to see if offering free uh, six week programs to certain people in return they talk about me they post you know they tag us and they share their progress and make sure that they're, you know, kind of promoting us uh, in return for the six-week program. So it's a little trial run. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, he starts at Sunday. He's going to start this program this coming Sunday. It's six weeks long. And I don't know. We'll see what kind of progress he can make in six weeks with this decently basic program. So, Abby. What? I heard you hit a PR the other day. I did not. I guess I did. I hit a 135 on bench. Easy. Then went up 10 <laughs> pounds and got stuck. <laughs> At least I got it off my chest. Yeah, she's been... How long have you been... So talk about the journey to bench pressing 135. Um, the journey to benching 135 was very, very rough. I am a very mental person and I let things get to my head too much. And when the big plates are on, everything just turns off and I don't know what to do and I get very confused. Not confused, but I get very frazzled. Um, I don't like to think about things too much. And when John's like, you're benching 135 today, and I'm like, okay, all right. And he's just like, you have to get ready for it. I'm like, okay, all right. And I don't really get nervous until I actually have to do it. Like John keeps telling you or asking me about how how I feel about prepping for a powerlifting competition or how I think about it. I'm just like, I don't really think about it. I just let it happen and I just let things happen. Because if I think about it too much, then I get nervous and I start to freak myself out. Then I can't sleep at night because my thoughts keep running in my head like the other night where I'm like, well, how are they going to change the height of the weight, the squat rack? Or how are they going to do flights or how are they going to do this and then I just start getting in my head and start thinking about what ifs and I don't like doing that because then I can't sleep at night but um finally benching 135 felt really good how how long did it take you think it took me a couple months (laughs) months because we were still in Canton when I was trying to hit 135 so maybe a year no yeah maybe a year because I was, I'm just very, very mental. And, I mean, I could do it with a slingshot on. I mean, anyone could basically do it with a slingshot yeah. on. But still, um, I've I've always had more weight in my hands because of, like, um, like floor presses and pin presses. And we've done reverse bands with... It wasn't that she couldn't do it. Yeah, she I just couldn't... She, she I could just, have bench pressed this months ago. She just I just hasn't. couldn't get my mind and my muscles in the right track like my mind was like okay you could do it but my muscles were just like no you're not gonna do it so i have to kind of connect them together for everything to work and that's just how it goes like i just have to remember about my technique and remember everything that john says before i go and he was always like elbows in back tight shoulders deep breath in blah 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 blah. and i just gotta try to remember that as i do it or else everything just goes haywire and nothing works yeah. yeah. So, with that in mind, it's a, uh, 
you know, it's a constant battle, whether it's, you know, mental game or whether it's emotion, you know, if you're a, a real emotional lifter, which... Oh, I cry. I cry every time I get a new PR, which I yeah, know... Yeah, she, like... she was pretty <laughs> teary-eyed when she benched that 135, but... You know, she is in front of a lot of people, so she didn't want to... I wasn't to... in front of a lot of people. Yeah. Your dad intimidated me more than anything. I was just like, fuck. He drove an hour here, and John says I have to hit 135, and it's like, now I can't not do it. I kind of tried to put the pressure on her, because I knew she could do it months ago. She's just such a head case, she didn't do it. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a lot that's involved with lifting and exercising. And it's not like I didn't want to do it. I just was scared. You found, benching, re- you found excuses, not reasons. Yeah. Well, benching is not my f- first pick of exercise to do. My first one is deadlifts because if I can't pick it up, it's not going to go anywhere. But benching, it's like if you can't go and press it off your chest, then you're stuck. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to let it smash you. <laughs> I know. But like with squats, too, it's like if you can't get it up, you're stuck in that down position. And it's either like your spotters save you or you just put it down on the safety pins. Yeah, you can always dump it. Yeah, but that's not fun. You don't want to fail. And I just don't like to fail sometimes. So it's also that reason. Like, I'm just afraid that I won't do it or I'll let you down or, yeah. More importantly, you let yourself down. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Fitness is a, it's a long journey, y'all. It, there's a lot to working out. There's a lot to preparing. There's a lot... Of things involved, you know, maybe not at a beginner's level, because beginners are going to have the like the beginner PRs. You know, if you're just now starting to work out, and you, you know, if you're 13 to 15, 13 to 16 years old, uh, you know, and you go into the gym and you work out and you hit like a bar and a ten, or like a bar and a ten and a five, because I did not have. I don't have good genetics. Like I don't it's not like I don't have good genetics. I got a hard work ethic and I got discipline and I don't give myself excuses. Um there's a lot of things that I sacrifice for these personal gains of fitness in the gym. Uh like cardio for instance. And uh yeah, it's it's just a long process, and if you're a beginner, you're going to get that beginner's strength, and you're going to hit some awesome PRs, but as you get better, as you progress, as you get stronger and more experienced and elite, it's going to be, it's just going to keep getting harder and harder and harder to get that extra 15, 10, or even 5 pounds on the bar, especially when you're damn near your max potential, so... Abby has a long way to go. Yep. If she decides to continue with powerlifting. Yeah. I think she's always going to probably... Train I think powerlifting she's, style. I think she's always going to train the DS7 method, but that doesn't mean that she's going to, like... Compete. Compete or, you know, really push herself, so... Yeah. I think this year, like, 2018... Is like the year of trying to find myself, kind of. Because, like, I'm not in college no more, anymore. Let's use proper grammar now. I have a bachelor's degree. <laughs> um, but I'm not in college anymore. I moved out of home. Um, I'm in Ohio now trying to figure out what I want to do and where I want to be. So it's just a lot of trial and error and a lot of... Uh, thoughts that go through my head of what I want to do for the rest of my life but I think this is the year where I'll find it well it's July time's ticking <laughs> no I have like how old are you I have four more five how, more months how, I'm 23 I mean I know how old you are but I wanted you to tell them yeah I'm 23 she's 23 years old I'm 26 and you know, I have th- I got three years on her, but three years definitely make a difference. Yeah. Especially from 19 to 21. I mean, think about that. Mm-hmm. Think about 21 to 23 or 24, you know. I think it was, um, I think there was a video that you made me watch for Gary V. Where it was just like, where he was talking and he was just saying how, like, your 20s. What are you doing? Oh. 
your 20s are like your time for the things where it's supposed to be scary and it's supposed to be not okay because that's where you make your mistakes and that's where you find out what you like and what you don't like and everything else because that's just how life is and it's okay for you to make mistakes and it's okay for you to make the great leaps because you only have one life and you don't want to be making these mistakes at freaking 35 40 45 years old when you're supposed to already have it figured out your 20s are the time for trial and error the 20s are the times where you make the mistakes and you do the the risky jobs and you do you know you do all that crazy stuff that you wouldn't normally do because you have time you have nothing but time even at 30 35 years old even at 40 you still have plenty of time but uh i have that entrepreneurial dna in me i have that i have the drive and my drive almost scares me sometimes because of the lengths that i would go potentially would go to get what i want and to get where i would want to be i mean i have no problem sleeping you know, on a mattress, on the floor, in the gym, so I can, you know, be a happy, successful business owner because at the end of the day, you know, I'll still have, you know, I'll still have the dogs, I'll still have Abby, I'll still have the car, um, and I'll, I'll have that happiness because that's that's the key right there to life is happiness and you don't want to just be stuck in your cubicle for 20, 30 years, 40 years or whatever you know, not living up to your full potential because, you know, nobody's, I want to say anybody's gifted. I'm, everybody's born the same. Everybody's born equal. Some just work harder than others. Yeah. And I'll be damned if I don't find out what I, what I'm capable of. Yeah. Because I will, I will push harder than, than anybody else. And my work ethic and my drive is unquestionable. Uh, the, just the thing holding me back right now is the army. You know, I have to get out to free myself in order to go chase these dreams because, you know, as a soldier, you know, that comes first, you know, besides family, family's always first, but then that, you know, second, I'm a soldier and it's, it's just a real emotional battle, a mental battle with me trying to, you know, be that perfect soldier that I know I can be and that, you know, I'm, I am. And also a professional powerlifter and, you know, mentor and businessman and all these other things that I'm trying to be um, because it's very, it's very, very hard to do both, you know, and um, I'm wanting to chase my dreams and seek, sink all of my time and attention into uh, building this brand and the gym and training and stuff like that. You know, that, that, that's, that is what I want to do. That's why I'm here on earth. And I put seven very, very hard years in the Army, hardworking years, into trying, you know, trying to do all the cool stuff that people want to do, you know, going to drill sergeant school, going airborne, getting deployed, you know, going to ranger school, sapper school. Like, I've tried to do all that stuff, but for whatever reason, um... It, my path in the army has just not led me in that direction. It's, it's led me to where I am today, and it's done that for a reason. And it's time for me to chase my goals and follow my dreams. And it all has to start somewhere. So, this is the year for me. This is my preparation year <clears throat> because this year I'm preparing for the Arnold Classic of next year. And I'm also, in a way, possibly preparing to get out of the Army next year. So this year is going to be a real uh, mental slash, you know, thinking game. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a process preparing to do all this and implement this stuff. And then next year is going to be, you know, the execution, hopefully. Hopefully I don't have to sign another contract. But if I do, I will. Um, but next year is really going to be the action year where everything gets implemented and we're just full, we're in full effect. Yeah. And there could be one, possibly two businesses that's owned by us that we're going to be running next year. And I definitely think it could happen, but we have to start 
planning and preparing now. We cannot wait until six months from now where it's like, oh, yeah, maybe we should start saving up. You yeah, know? no. Like, we have to start saving up now. But we're also starting to save up for the WPO in Florida in November. And then we're also starting to save up for our trip for Christmas because we're going to go back to New York and celebrate Christmas with my family and probably New Year's um, because we spent Christmas and New Year's with his family last year. So we're, we are going to flip-flop it every year. But with me going into college, I've always known that I've – never wanted a job that made me sit at a desk and that's why I went into the health field because most of the jobs in the health field require like one-on-one attention to a person or just working with different people of all ages and that's what I've always wanted to do but I just haven't found out what exactly I wanted to do. My major is very broad in it and I'm thankful for taking that major because of the things that I can Oh, the things that I can do. And um, I've taken nutrition classes. I've taken program planning classes. I've taken exercise classes, uh, coaching classes. And I feel like I have so much knowledge in my head, but I just haven't honed down of what I've wanted to do. And it's hard to find out what I want to do because of where we live right now. The place that we live right now doesn't really have that much need for the things that I can do. But if we lived in Columbus, I feel like I could have found a job already and figured out what I wanted but everything happens for a reason and if we didn't come to this area then I wouldn't have been able to find the business that I want to buy and find like and actually take my passion to the next level because I've always said that I can't do anything with my passion of cheerleading but I think I found it I think I found it let's hope let's hope so during this podcast at the beginning we took like a little video of our microphone here and we asked the viewers of instagram you know ask us a question because you know that's the new hot trend on instagram these days is everyone's like ask me a question ask me a question ask me a question so uh our first question was by who was it was dave lusk i mean it was by dave lusk but oh i don't know d lusk i don't know how to what our first, our first question was by D Lusk Two. It's my buddy Dave from the gym, and he was like, "What are some realistic expectations for lifters in one year versus five years?" And that's <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's our number two question. So, oh, okay. um, so he was wanting to know what's some realistic. Uh, expectations of lifters from one to five years and I think that what's going to happen with beginners like if you're a beginner lifter so let's say you're all right let let me take this question and uh, take it straight to Dave so Dave's been at the gym already he's he's been going to the gym he's been seeing some great progress from you know, uh, I think is Eric his coach right now. Yeah. Eric Landrum. He goes to the gym. He's a, a bodybuilder, and he's been coaching Dave um, for a while now. Dave's seen great results from Eric. Uh, he's getting stronger. He's getting leaner. He's he's building some muscle. He's definitely building up that confidence and stuff. So, Dave, to answer your question, um, I think that. If somebody like yourself has all of the right tools mixed with the discipline and dedication, I think they can see a huge, huge difference in five years. Uh, when What year is my first year back to powerlifting? 2017? Yep. So from 2017 to now... Uh, which is July of 2018, I have went from a 1,600-pound total to I should have – I'm projecting the total about 19 to 1950. And that's just in a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- that's that's like 300 pounds on my PR Yeah, in a year. And – you know, I'm not. To, I'm not. I can't tell you that everybody's going to see the same results, 
But I think that if you're able to find out what works for you and you're able to put in the time and effort day in and day out that you yourself could see huge, huge changes and huge results in five years. Um, But going with that, you had to figure out like what you want to do. Do you want to become a powerlifter? Do you want to become a crossfitter? Do you want to become like a bodybuilder or a Olympic weightlifter? Right. Is that what it's called? Yeah, you got but your you got your weightlifter. You gotta find your like your niche, your niche. Your <laughs> I say niche. You gotta find your niche and and just go with it. Like because my pro, I when I, before I really really started focusing on powerlifting. I mean, of course, I worked out. I've been a gym junkie forever. Yeah. But until you actually find, until you actually make a goal and hone in on what you actually want to do, your progress is going to be slow. Yeah. And then once you're like, oh, shit, you know, I want to be a bodybuilder. Well, now all of your training, all of your diet, all of your daily routines, everything. People you follow on Instagram. People you freaking talk to on a daily basis. Everything needs to be revolved around that goal. And if you don't have a goal, then your, your daily life is not going to be moving in that direction. It's just kind of going to be like throwing paint on the wall. It's just splattered out. Yeah. But once you make the decision, hey, I'm going to set a goal within the next year to put pounds on my PR on the platform and powerlifting, then you're going to see huge results versus, well, I want to do this bodybuilding program for three months, and I want to do this powerlifting program for three months, and I want to take a month off, and then I want to try this CrossFit workout. You're, I mean, you, you might see some results, but just because of the nature of working out. But imagine if you were to pick a goal, stick to that goal for a year or five years in a row, and have your whole life revolved around that goal. Imagine yeah. the kind of progress you can make then. So, and uh, talking to Dave, he's really aware of what setting a goal is because he has his own business. So Dave, if you're listening... Just do what you did with that business and take it into training. Take it in the gym because we know that you could do it. But it's just figuring out what you want to do and where you want to be at. So, And my advice would be to seek people who are on the same path as you want to be on. So if you want to be a bodybuilder, you can take things away from powerlifters, but... You know, we're not going to know everything there is to know about bodybuilding. And if you want to be a CrossFitter, definitely don't ask a powerlifter because <laughs> we don't do any of that shit. But, I mean, we can get you strong for sure. But, you know, find somebody that is doing what you want to do or has already done what you want to do. And, I mean, you're you're older than I am. You already have your business. Like, you're already doing things. You're not dumb. You're a very smart guy. So I know that – you can get to where you want to be. I think you just need to hone in what exactly it is that you want to do in the fitness world, whether it's bodybuilding or powerlifting, or you just want to become like a mass monster or a genetic, you know, just a, I want to say a genetic freak, but uh, just become shredded or, or whatever, you know, just find a goal and stick to it and just get that tunnel vision and chase after it. And I think you're going to see much, much better results than if you just kind of... Flip-flop back and forth. Flip-flop or... and don't pick a goal and shoot from the hip. Yep. So, our second question that we got... <laughs> it's not, I mean, your second answer. Well, it's the second answer. So, we put on Instagram, I said, hey, you know, what should we talk about in our podcast? And, and Dave mentioned one. And then somebody put down, talk about George. So let me talk about George for a second. Um, George is one of my online clients, um, and he's preparing for, I think, his first real powerlifting meet. Mm, no, I think he did the other one. He did Iron City Barbell powerlifting meet. Yeah. Oh, he's not doing the Iron... Okay, okay. Yeah, No, no actual... he's done the Iron City no, Barbell I'm saying, part. like, he's not doing the one... That I'm doing. So, yes, it is his actual real Yeah, like, I want to say the Iron City Barbell competition is not a real powerlifting meet, but 
it's not a real powerlifting meet. Yeah. I mean, it's it's to get people involved in the sports. To you know, it's is it sanctioned? No, it's not sanctioned. It's not a sanctioned meet, so it's not like these. You know, it's an in gym powerlifting meet is what it is. But yeah. he's signing up for his first powerlifting competition, his real first real one. And I think it might be the one in Lexington. Yeah, right? I think I think he's doing the one at Lexington Strength and uh, Grove City, Columbia, or Grove City, Ohio. That'd be cool. And it's we'll on, be there. it's on October 27th. No, we won't. We're going to be in Dayton. No, because yours is September 29th. So why would we be in Grove City on the October 27th? Because we might see him lift. I don't know. Yeah, we'll probably go watch him lift, honestly. But, uh, so he's one of my clients. And, you know, I'm not too sure what kind of training he was doing before. But he he's he's told me that he's fell in love with the program that I've given him. And he really likes how uh, refreshed he feels, and he likes that there there are days where you go in and get after it um, on the dynamic side, and then there's days you go in there and get after it on the heavy side. And so he is a personal trainer himself. He owns Savage Bodies. I think it's called Training Savage Bodies. Training Savage Bodies. He goes to Rio Grande. Yep, and, uh, you know, he's... He's a knowledgeable individual, and every you know every coach has a coach, yeah. For the most part, I mean, every everybody has had somebody influence them one way or the other, and you know, I am, I wouldn't say mentoring, but you know, I'm kind of helping out George with his programming because I've been doing powerlifting just a little bit longer than he has, so you know, I kind of know a little bit more. And I'm able to pass that knowledge off onto him, and he's going to pick up on it quick. He's going to grasp the concept of you know what I'm putting down, and then he's going to be able to run with it and then apply that to his clients in the future for his own his own business and his own personal training. So there's definitely something that we can learn from everybody. You know, drop the ego. Don't be embarrassed to ask questions. And uh, you know, he he's a good example of somebody who who is already fit, who who does have clients. And who is currently training people, but he's also reaching out to others, looking for you know advice. And my, my me myself, I do that. You know, I reach out to people who have done things just a little bit longer than I have, or you know, people who are even just beginning. I'm mean, like, you know, hey, you know, what's this? What's that? You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So, um, you got to be humble. You know, if you want to make it, you got to be humble and sit down. Sit down. Put the ego. <laughs> be humble. At the, you know, yeah, <laughs> sit down, be humble. You know, put the, leave the ego out of it, and you know, go out there and make things happen. And I believe that George is going to hit some pretty good PRs this next competition. Um, but like I said, he's already somewhat seasoned in the gym. He still has a very, very long way to go, just like myself. But you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where we'll see what kind of total he gets in October. So. Yep. So that's it. I want to thank you all for listening to this amazing podcast from John Dang. John Royster and Abby Lanchenga. And that's it. Be sure to subscribe to our uh, Insta- or yeah, go freaking subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Instagram, Facebook. You know, go like, share, comment, all that good stuff. If you're interested in personal training, contact us. Uh, there's a thousand different ways via social media. Uh, and y'all have a freaking good day, all right? And Wait, wait. I'm not ready. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. Okay. And here's our favorite song of the week. Okay, bye. She got me in my feelings. Gotta be real with it. Yeah. Kiki, do you love me? Are you right?